Hi, I'm Simon, welcome to Do It. And a couple of years ago, we released a video about cleaning the beer lines in your kegerator. The response was pretty good. It's to date still one of our most popular videos and uh, people got some good information out of it. So before I go hosting a 4th of July party today, I went out and got a new keg to put in here and it's been a while. So instead of cleaning the lines, I thought I'd take an opportunity to show you how to change the beer lines in your home kegerator system. It's a pretty short list of stuff you need. Uh, as far as things that I purchased and picked up, you need the right kind of hose, so PVC food grade beverage hose. Um, now it took a lot of research on this item, so there are some, some industry standards called FS, NSF 51, NSF 61, and uh, ANSI 3, all these numbers and acronyms and or, um, initialisms. And after reading up, there's, a, there's a, whole, a lot of debate out there about which is most appropriate. I even caught a blog about somebody who, who uses a product called polytubing and it's lined on the inside with uh, some type of polymer, I'm not sure, that um, reduces the, the tainting of the taste through, of the beer through the hose. Long story short, do your research, make sure you get the right size and kind. What I'm using is a 3 16 inner diameter PVC tube and it is NSF 61. Uh, we're going for it. I also bought uh, some hose clamps. Okay, I was hoping to get some, find some vinyl ones, but these should do just fine. Some folks might say they're not necessary, but personally I think you always want to back up your hose connections with a little exterior grip. You're also going to need a uh, faucet wrench to take your faucet off the shank. You're going to need a uh, keg cleaning kit, mostly not really a keg cleaning kit, but pretty much some, uh, so I use Brew Clean. It was inc included in a kit from Keg Connection and you saw me use it in the last kegerator video. Some kind of brush to really get in there and clean out your faucet. Uh, on top of that, you're, you're going to need a, a liter or so of really hot water. Keep it under a boil. You don't want to, there's a, again more debate in the kegerator community about um, how boiling water might actually compromise the interior or just any part of your hose really and certain you know defects and things we can add to foam and, and other um, things that you don't want impurities in your, in your beer. So let's get to it. I went ahead and I've already disconnected the faucet from the shank. You've seen me do that in the other video, but you take this nifty faucet wrench, hook it into um, into one of the acceptors here, turn it off, it just threads right off, no problem. Uh, to get the shank disconnected, at the top of your tower, most likely, pops right off like that. So, there was a nut, shank nut, on the inside here that went up against this little flat PVC piece which I removed and uh, I also loosened this out from the uh, we'll call this the little fitted tower piece this is the exterior shank nut and it's probably smart if you're not um, comfortable with because some of these are gonna fall right off the shank maybe take a photograph of this order that way you remember not just the order but exactly which way everything's supposed to face and it's a real easy setup after that. So if you take a look at my lines at a certain point that have been well refrigerated, they, they don't look too bad. Um, there's a little bit of you know yellowing going on. I mean, hardly at all though. And, and I do a pretty good job keeping them clean between kegs. But as soon as you hit this tower, and then there's even a couple extra inches on this shank because I got the wrong kind. When I replaced it, I got a refrigerator conversion kit. So this shank is extra long. So that's another extra three, four inches of uninsulated line. But if you take a look, that looks way different than the clear line down there. Right? And you can almost see 
the exact spot where it comes out of the fridge, the color difference. Right? And it normally would not look like that. Um, this is just me, like I said, it's been a long time since I've had a beer in there, so it's been sitting around a while. Time to replace the line. So to get the vinyl tubing off your shank, you could give it a good pull and a tug, and there you go. If your barbs um, aren't too sharp, uh, it can pull back. That's another perfectly good example as to why you're going to want uh, hose clamps. Just in case there's ever any extra force in the opposite direction, um, it's good to have those really in there. Uh, a tool that I forgot to mention that you might want is some scissors or a blade. If this thing is really extra stubborn, take a, a box cutter, exacto knife, or something, kitchen knife, um, and you can just kind of keep lightly making a slit deeper and deeper through the vinyl tubing. Um, and of course, just cut it off, but we want to make sure to be careful not to damage this. On the coupler end, uh, there's a, a manufacturer's hose clamp on it, so you're going to want to pry that off however you can. I'm not so worried about what happens to it or the line. Obviously, I'm replacing those. just want to make sure that you are careful not to damage the uh, coupler or the uh, nipple on it itself. Old hose, hang on to that for a sec because we're going to use it to measure the new one to the same length. And uh, while we cut that, we're going to let some of these components soak in our uh, cleaning solution. Uh, use about half as much of the brew cleaning solvent because I use about half as much water because we're not actually running it through dirty lines here. We're just going to clean up some components and even soak, even soak the new line in there to um, clean it up also. So this is just a teaspoon, about one and a half of these would be half of what I put in for the normal amount of water. Stir it up till it's fully dissolved. We're going to put in the shank carefully. Ooh, yeah. The faucet. Also put in the coupler down there and the new line of hose just to kind of clean off anything that's going on on it. And um, we're going to scrub these up too with my little wire brushes. Uh, no need to show that. So on to the next step. I liked the amount of cord we had last time. Roughly five feet. People might have different preferences. Just make sure that you leave yourself enough slack so that it can flex in places where it needs to coil if, if at all. Uh, also giving yourself enough space to pull it out of the fridge with, uh, with ease and do all your cleaning. Save the excess for next time. A viewer in the Clean Your Beer Lines video left a comment that made a lot of sense. Uh, and he said, maybe you ought to take this apart and really give it a deep clean. And he was absolutely right. Um, I did it on a clean a couple times ago and I was really shocked to find that the internal components here can get pretty grimy too, even if you take your, um, your scrubber to it. So we'll do that right here real quick. So the text on my old tube said the inner diameter was 3 16 uh, I found it hard to believe because um, it took quite a bit of persuasion to get this line onto the coupler. But um, it does in fact make it all the way down. So hooray, and um, it's, it's also very pleasing to know that it's going to be a real tight fit. This is not going anywhere. Still going to add the hose clamp. These hose clamps not recommended for this. Um, at this scale, they're just a pain in the butt to work with. Um, I couldn't find at any big box stores these really nifty little uh, vinyl clamps that crimp together. You just pinch in my hand. They're super quick. Not always reusable, but it's, it's great. Um, sure, I'll be able to reuse these, but the time it took to like really twist at that tight of a radius on there, um, 
just not that great. It'll serve its purpose, and I'm still going to use them, but anyway. Um, at this stage, when this is connected to the coupler, you've got to really be mindful of the order in which you do things. You don't want to make a connection and realize that you left out one of these components from, uh, from the shank. So I think I'm going to go the faucet little stopper bushing thing here. <laughs> Real technical terms around here. Um, the faucet nut goes there. Make sure that you're being mindful too of anything, any rubber O-rings that might have slipped out. Um, you definitely don't want that kind of leak up here. And then now from the back side, exterior shank nut with the flat end ready to go up against the tower fitted piece. So the flat end faces away from the faucet towards the tower. Fitted piece goes there. So now, my camera setup's not that great, so I'm gonna disappear for a second while I feed this up through the tower. Okay. Flat side facing out in the tower, and I don't wanna drop it, I wanna kinda of keep a hold of it right here. So I've got this looped right here, I don't know if you can see very well, probably not, but uh, just got a little extra loop at the top of the cord so this nut doesn't want to fall all the way back down. And here we go, putting this on the end of this nipple, so wish me luck. While you're watching him do that, let's go ahead and thank some of our Patreon supporters. Kim and Garrett Make It and Moody Woodcarving, thanks for our support over there. I did it, and I'm sweating. Sweet, so looking down from the inside, uh, down from the top of the tower, with the top off, I was able to thread the interior shank nut tight to the flat pieces, the exterior ones tight against the little fitted piece here. Pop this guy back on. Boom. Let's pull the stuff out of the cleaning solution, let's reassemble, couple the keg, and we're good to go. Hmm, wait a minute. It's baseball season. And if you're curious about what's on tap, it's Riggs American Lager from Urbana, Illinois. Cheers.